Now that, that fancy clock that I picked up a couple months back seems to have a problem. One of the display digits is a bit weak. Hmm. Oh, I think we may have a connection problem in here. I guess we'll have to take this one apart and fix it. So let's do that. That's probably why the guy sold it in the first place. It probably started acting up and uh, he figured he'd flog it on someone else. But yeah, that it's this one that's going dim. Of course, now it's not going to do it. Now, well, I guess. But we know which one it is, so I'll pull the front off of it and uh, see if we can find it. It looks like a bad connection somewhere. Yeah, it's kind of flickering a bit there. Anyway, let me get the back off this unit. So the screw's out, the front cover just lifts off, just like that. And it was this display here that's acting up. So it's either going to be a connection on the display itself or one of these drive transistors, I'm thinking. Probably the display, because it's like a, either a common anode or a common cathode, it's just going to be one pin because if it was one of the one of the segments we'd lose brightness on a segment but because the entire the entire display is going dark it's got to be one of the connections on the actual display itself on what on the common lead whichever one that is so I got to remove the screws that hold the circuit board down flip the whole board over and See where the connection problem is and see if we can get it resolved. Nothing more annoying than having it flicker and go out completely. So once again it's this one that's bad. So we're going to flip the display over and I'm going to unplug the power. We're going to inspect these connections here. So power unplugged. Let's get a close look and see if it's one of these connections. Could be that one right there. Look at this one. Looks like it might be that one right there. I'll redo all of them. But it looks it looks like it might be this one right here. This bad. It's kind of cracked. Whoops. It's kind of cracked all the way around. So that, but I'll redo them all. It might not hurt to do all of them while I've got it apart for all the displays, just because if one's bad. Some of the other ones may not be far behind, so it probably wouldn't hurt to redo them. Same with these transistors. Since I've already got it apart, I might as well just resolder a few of the connections here while I'm at it, just to make sure I don't have future problems down the road. Not that it's difficult to to uh, service it; it's just that. I gotta take it off the wall and bring it into the shop to work on it. To say it probably wouldn't hurt to redo the other display panels as well while I'm at it.
All right, I've redone all the connections. Carefully place the board back down. This is quite a big board, so it's, it'd be fragile to damage. That's why they've got all these supports on the board. They've got so many supports. They've got wooden blocks and so forth in the middle here to support the board. Plug it in, and it should light up with the right time on here. Oops. Help if I don't hit the power switch off. Okay. It's uh, not flickering anymore. It looks like. It looks like it's looks like it's working now. That was the one that was dark before. So I can put the screws back in that hold the board back down to the the base and put the cover on it and. Hopefully that's the last we'll have to see this thing come apart. I have this hanging up in the corner over my stereo in my living room. It looks pretty cool. You can read it from the other side of the house. So it would not surprise me at all if that's why the guy that sold it got rid of it. It's because the, uh, the display was flashing. What I found interesting when I was looking at the back of the board is that on this display panel there's only three connections made. The two for the segments that can light up to form the one and the, the common anode or cathode, whatever it is. And on the, the display that can only that shows the, the, the uh, day of the week, the connection that corresponds to that component that segment is also not connected. Because, of course, this display is only going to form the numbers 1, 2, or 3 for, you know, 10, 20, or 30 for the day of the week. The rest of them have all seven segments connected. All of them, the decimal points, are not connected at all on any of them. So there's one open connection on each display panel, which is not connected, being for the decimal point. But on these ones, rather than, because the, the display is never going to show anything other than a 1 for the 10th, 11th, and 12th month, they didn't connect the other connections up. Normally they would be connected in parallel with all the other ones, right? But because it's never going to light up, they didn't connect them. Same with the one for the, the tens of days of the month. Because there's only 30 days, there's no reason to ever have this display for. So they just saved themselves the copper and the solder to tack it down because it's never going to display anything. Anyway, Looking good. Let me get the thing back together and we'll do one final shot and I'll put it back up on the wall. I know I've showed this before, but this is glass and aluminum. It just sits together like that. And there's some screws that hold it back together. This originally probably cost a few bucks when it was new. There we go, back together. Thanks for watching.